Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the Ticknell welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box. <clears throat> Good stuff. Okay, let's, uh, let's get going here. Um, before we do start, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. We, uh, by now, I'm sure, are all aware of the inherent risk involved in trading any financial instruments and the possibility of losing more money than you actually have on deposit. Um, and secondly, and most importantly uh, for today's discussion, uh, the views expressed by, uh, by me today are solely mine, and they are not indicative or representative of, um, of tip mill. Let me just turn off this. Uh, oops, one second. Just get rid of some audio feeds and get going. Uh, so yeah, not indicative of, um, of tip mill. Um, so before we jump into the charts, a uh, brief introduction for those who are here for the uh, first time. Uh, my name is Patrick Munley, like I say. Um, after I graduated from, uh, from King's College, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years of learning the ropes, I left with a couple of colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit the consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. So with some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling uh, the S&P 500, and after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, uh, operating without a plan really or any idea of what I was doing, I began to average down into positions, very quickly gave back all my gains, and ultimately I experienced a six-figure uh, financial hit on my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was really feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent track record in trading. Uh, working with that mentor over an 18 month to two year period, it was, uh, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, uh, which I extensively back and forward tested and developed a rigorous risk management approach, but most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly um, developed my mental game. And probably the most important uh, change I made, or the wa or watershed shift, so to speak, uh, was from being a highly orientated, um, go from being highly goal orientated and focused on financial gains, to becoming uh, purely process orientated. So, uh, what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and really start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy. Um, often in time, uh, often during periods of negative feedback from the markets in the, in the form of uh, losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being really a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you then can let go of the emotional attachment and investment and that hellish roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know that if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has uh, delivered annual positive returns since 2008. Um, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, uh, delivering annual positive returns. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you can see the results of the managed account service on the screen. Um, and I'm now responsible for managing a multi-million dollar uh, portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of really all experience levels, from complete novices 
um, to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also the resident market expert for TICMA, providing uh, market and trade analysis. I provide a daily market outlook and a, a chart of the day, which is a setup that I'm watching um, for, the, for the session ahead. Uh, my other passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com, offering development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates uh, in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested, um, if you want me to drop a link in the chat at the end of uh, today's presentation, I'll do so. And you can, uh, you can follow up on that separately. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into, into the charts. First of all, as we start the new month, October, it's always useful to check in, or certainly it's a, something I do, is uh, check in with the, the seasonal patterns that may, uh, may play out in the markets during the month ahead. What you have on the screen here is a heat map that shows the best and worst months for each market. So what we can see here uh, for October is um, the Australian dollar could uh, could do some uh, could, we could see some positivity in terms of the Australian dollar it being the third best month of the year for the Australian dollar Swiss franc it's the worst month of the year um, during October and November and um, the dollar index. Traditionally, this is going back over a 20 year period, um, we could see the October, November period, the period, period during which um, prices are supported. Now, the slight uh, or, 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 the, or the kink with respect to this at, um, at the moment is that obviously we're heading into this election cycle and, um, and that brings with it its own uh, specific seasonal patterns, one of which I've highlighted previously, uh, is this idea that we will see uh, uh, weakness in terms of the equity markets heading into, uh, into these elections. But historically, once we get the election out, out of the way, um, then we could, see, uh, we could see risk assets pick up. So with that said, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the charts that I'm watching at the moment and some of the patterns. Um, firstly, I want to highlight this uh, fractal pattern that I've, uh, I've shared previously. Um, this is the dollar index, the, uh, the broad dollar index versus uh, six currency pairs. Um, and what we can see here is the similarities in terms of the price action during the 2017 period into, a, into the December low, uh, the January low uh, for the dollar. And we're seeing a similar pattern play out uh, this year. Now, as always, like I've said, with these fractal patterns, we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily gonna get the, uh, the, the exact replica of price action, but we can use these as a guide for, um, for what we may see develop. And certainly at the moment, this is tracking pretty well in terms, of, uh, in terms of the pattern. You can see here that we were looking for a low, a September low in the dollar index and then a move off those lows. So we got a, a, a low just at the beginning of September and we've since seen the, the dollar expand to the upside. We're now seeing a pullback and I, I highlighted to the uh, traders on my trading team this morning that uh, it, we're actually seeing the same pullback uh, or well, potentially the same pullback that we saw um, during late 2017. So what does this mean? Well, when we look on the, uh, the actual execution charts in a minute, you'll be able to see uh, what I think we might, uh, what, what we might be able to do in terms of trading opportunity using this, uh, this fractal pattern. But certainly what we'd be looking for now is for the, the dollar index to, uh, to carve out a, a secondary low here and, uh, and then extend to the upside into, uh, into the elections really. And I think then post the election, we could see the, the next leg of meaningful uh, 
uh, downside in terms of the dollar index. So how does this feed into the majors? Well, similar story with the euro, really. Um, we're looking at this same pattern play out here uh, in the corrective phase for the euro in 2017. And you can see we're, we're mirroring it pretty closely. And what we'd anticipate now is that we retest and hold these prior range lows in and around uh, this 117.50 to 117.80 area. And again, in a minute, when we look on the execution charts, you'll see where I think where I potentially see the opportunity for a, for a trading setup. So that's the euro. Similar deal with sterling. Um, different in terms of scale, that we've slightly different scale in terms of the pattern, but you can still see the similarities in price structure. And, um, and sterling would anticipate a, as is often the case with sterling, sterling a messy uh, corrective low to be made here. We're obviously getting headlines left, right and centre at the moment with respect to the UK EU trade negotiations. Um, yes, coming into today, we had uh, the EU striking a, a rather resilient tone in terms of the fact that they didn't see, uh, didn't see talks progressing. And then lo and behold, an hour later, um, we get uh, an FT reporter coming out saying that the UK government think everything's on track and, you know, we're going to get a deal. And so that's whipsawing the price action around here. And I think that, you know, we can see this continue. Um, certainly we'll have tomorrow morning the, uh, the chief negotiator, negotiators, both Barnier and Frost, Barnier obviously representing Europe and Frost, the UK, they'll do their press conference update tomorrow. So we could see some more whippy price action in terms of cable, but ultimately what I think we could see here is a tradable low in terms of cable and, uh, and then a move to the upside. But again, we'll look on, on the uh, daily time frame shortly. Uh, dollar yen continues to trade. Uh, in a relatively tight range here, supported, uh, as I've highlighted in pre prior sessions, below this, uh, below this 105 level for now. And, uh, and as it does, I think we've got scope to, to make a move up potentially to see 108. Um, the Aussie. So in terms of the Aussie, I think we're, we're coming into a potentially a corrective phase. Now, obviously, we have that seasonal pattern that I just highlighted that suggested some strength for the Aussie. But I think we've got, in terms of uh, trading opportunities. I think we've got a bit of work to do potentially on the downside. This would obviously coincide with the idea that the dollar index is going to kind of have a bit of a lift here. Um, so I'm watching uh, the Australian dollar and I'll show you the, the actual trading pattern I'm looking for in a minute. Uh, similar story in the loonie here. I'm looking for, uh, you can see the, the similarities in terms of uh, the downside here in 2017. We made that low into September, low here into September, and we've and I had this initial move off the lows, and um, and then we we stalled out, but ultimately we, we tracked higher. Again, this would coincide with that idea of uh, the dollar index seeing a bit more strength. So, watching to see if we uh, if we can make a, a, another low here uh, in and around this one thirty two sixty area um, to get another leg of upside in terms of the uh, the loony, Swissy. Similar story, I think we potentially are going to carve out a, uh, a rather tricky bottom here in terms of the Swissy. Uh, you can see the, the similarities in terms of the scope and scale of price action that we saw during the 2017 period, uh, replicating itself over here. And, uh, and finally, we have uh, the Kiwi. Similar story in the Kiwi, really. I think we, uh, we could have a, a nice trading pattern developing in the Kiwi, and again, I'll go through that uh, now when we look at specific opportunities. So those are the fractal patterns that I'm using just to as, as guidance, really, um, and see how they, they play out. But certainly they've tracked very well and, uh, and are giving great trading opportunities uh, using these as a, as a market map, so to speak. So let's check in with uh, the daily timeframe charts and look at some potential trading opportunities. So with respect to the euro, I'm looking for the euro to basically test, obviously, first day of the month. So we have new monthly pivot in place now. The monthly pivot comes in at 117.80. We have the descending trend line resistance, 117.90. We have all these prior lows here um, to potentially now act as resistance in and around this area. So I'm watching for price action in this, in this zone to, uh, to potentially do something on the short side, looking ultimately really for a test or a retest of this uh, high here, uh, 
um, which would put us back down into the uh, lower parallel channel here. So somewhere just below 115 um, would be the ideal objective for this corrective pattern to complete. And then certainly I'd be looking on the upside. So watching really how we respond at this uh, 117.70 to 117.90 area as an opportunity to do something on the short side in the Euro. Dollar index. We have, obviously we had the inverse pattern playing out there. Um, this is the, the broad dollar index, like I say. We're testing into the symmetry swing support zone here um, versus this last decline. We also obviously have uh, sending trend line support coming in just ahead of that. We have the new monthly pivot, 9340. So watch for a potential uh, reversal in this area to ultimately set up another leg of upside in the dollar index. And what I'd ideally be looking for is, uh, is a move. So we take it down in here, and then we get a third leg higher off this interim low here to take us up into this zone. And that would broadly coincide with um, this, the fractal pattern completing uh, as it did in um, as it did in 2017. So we get this move, um, and then from there we can see the decline resume in terms of the dollar index. So let's see if we can hold this trend line support. Watch for bullish reversal patterns in and around this 93.30 area to um, to ultimately give us an opportunity uh, to do something on the upside. Obviously, if we take out the monthly pivot and this, more importantly, this uh, 9320 area, then uh, all bets are off with respect to upside and we could, uh, we could be uh, resuming the downside. So paying close attention, we can test some, uh, some pivotal areas here as we start the month. Um, <coughs> the Looney was, uh, was looking at this this morning. We've held to the tick at the moment, um, this symmetry swing support in the Looney. Uh, we've got a nice reversal pattern from the uh, from symmetry swing resistance. I posted this as a, a chart of the day yesterday. If we can take out um, this the current day's lows, then I'd probably look at uh, I'm doing something on the short side here. On the basis I can get in with a, a relatively tight stop just above today's highs and, uh, and the weekly pivot see if we can get down, take out the monthly pivot, and then we could see uh, a rollover here in terms of the uh, Looney trading down to test this descending trend line, uh, projected descending trend line support down to 128. At the moment though, like I say, we're holding that symmetry swing support pretty much to the pip. And if we do, then I think uh, we can look for a five wave pattern to develop here. Uh, as the first leg of a, a corrective move higher. And so again, if we go back to the, the fractal pattern here and we take and we check in with the uh, Looney. So we, you can see here, we've got that shallow pullback, initial move off the low, shallow pullback, and then higher. So um, that's what I'm watching with respect to the uh, Looney Euro we've just talked about. A couple of uh, other Euro, Euro trades that look quite interesting. We've got the Euro Aussie here. Um, Trading in a, in a pretty well-defined range, obviously, with, uh, with respect to the Euro Aussie. So we have, uh, this is our range resistance, which is held now uh, numerous times. And then obviously we have relatively well-defined uh, range support, which also uh, has held numerous times. So we're just trading within a, a nice, uh, nice range environment here. Um, offering about 500 pips. So we're at the midpoint of the range now. If we can break down, we're trading below the new monthly pivot, we're trading below the weekly pivot. We've got the, uh, the monthly VWAP, which is now bearish. If we can take out uh, the current lows, that should flip the weekly VWAP bearish. We've also got the daily VWAP bearish, and we've got the RSI stochastic nice and negatively diverged there. So that should open up, I think, a move to, uh, if we can take out the, the overnight lows here, I think we can get a move back down to test, uh, to test range support down to 61.50. And again, you can use relatively tight risk reward in terms of these setups, because where you get these, uh, what I refer to as Asian range breaks, you can, uh, you can use the, the day's high plus 10 or 15 pips as a protective stop. So you get really uh, great risk reward in terms of, uh, in terms of these setups. Euro Kiwi is another one that I'm watching. Got uh, got an order in place on this and Euro Aussie. So um, 
Again, with respect to the, uh, the Euro Kiwi, we're holding a slightly more narrow range, but we've uh, we've pinged it a couple of times now. And uh, and so what I'd look for is uh, is a move here in terms of the Euro Aussie to get us back down into range support. Now, if we can take out range support and we can uh, we can get things going on the downside, then this has got scope then to move down to uh, the broader range support down here towards the, uh, the current weekly S3. So we could see this down at 172, but the first port of call is going to be, um, is going to be this 175 area. So again, thinking in terms of risk and reward, always um, with respect to, to setups or chart patterns, you know, they're not, not every, the market's always moving and you know, there's, there's endless opportunity but to, to get successful and to, you know, to really build a career in trading, what you have to be able to do is kind of identify asymmetric opportunities with respect to, um, to risk rewards. So what we're looking at here is, like I say, we're trading in the middle of the range. If we can get a break lower here, we're going to take out, potentially take out the monthly pivot. We're trading below the weekly pivot. So pressure building to the downside. We've got the daily uh, VWAP bearish, nice big reversal candle yesterday from the range resistance. So if we can get through uh, this, this, these overnight lows, then again, what I'm thinking is um, from a protective stop perspective, getting a stop in 10 or 15 pips above the day's high and seeing if this thing can break down and get down to, to test that initial range support at 175. If the buyers aren't home here, then we, uh, then we can look lower to 172. Um, Sterling, obviously, whipsaw of a day. You can, uh, you can see the candles, uh, certainly in some of these uh, higher beta trades, we have, uh, we've certainly seen a whip around here. Mostly here at Sterling Cal, I mean, if, you, you, if you'd sold this pattern here, the equality objective at uh, 172.44, at one point this morning, you're up 250 pips, let's say, and now you're almost back to, uh, back to scratch on that. It's, uh, it's tricky trading, especially where you've got these, again, uh, it's a, it's, you're, you're basically trading a news cycle and, uh, and that can be incredibly, uh, incredibly tricky and incredibly frustrating and incredibly costly. Um, so nothing to do for me at the moment in sterling, but certainly what I pay attention to is that, um, is that we're coming back up now into test this monthly pivot for the first time from below at 130.20, we've got these um, prior lows over here. So I'll be paying attention to how we respond here. If we can get through here, uh, then the upside starts to open up for sterling and we could be taking a look at that 136, which is the long-term uh, trend line resistance that, uh, that I've talked about in previous sessions. So paying attention to a close through 130.50, let's say, opening up 136. Aussie, uh, so in terms of the Aussie, looking really for this trend line this, that, we, uh, that we've been, or this trend channel we've been trading in uh, for most of the summer, looking to see if we can get a test now of, um, of the trend line from below. And you can see we've got uh, this potential new trend line here. This will be the third test. And as, uh, as most of the guys who work with me, you know the third test is the one I like to pay attention to. So if we can ping up into uh, this 73 area, certainly want to be paying attention to how price responds there because it could be an opportunity to get in on the short side uh, in the Aussie here. Um, so that's an, one on the radar for next week, probably. Similar story really in the Kiwi. This, this one I, I prefer actually, we've got a potential uh, head and shoulders scenario developing here. and. Uh, just draw this in. So we have, this is going to be our left shoulder. We've got our head double top here. Nice. And then we look for our right shoulder to develop in and around here. So again, paying attention to uh, price action as we trade into this 67.15 area, watching for potential reversal patterns to, to do something on uh, on the short side. Now, if we get through here, then um, the next stop in terms of the Kiwi, this, we'll, uh, 
will be up into a uh, third touch here of this um, trend line resistance, ascending trend line resistance. And by that stage, and this is something I really like to pay attention to is divergence. So we could, you know, we could easily, we could work higher here through the 67.20, get up and test 68.50. Um, but once we get up there, I want to pay attention to price action. And certainly if this psych indicator the momentum study is back in testing into this uh, descending trend line resistance, we could have a really nice divergence trade on our hands and, uh, and a more meaningful top in place in terms of the Kiwi. Uh, Cad Yen. Cad Yen's going to make a, a retest of uh, the monthly pivot and again, former trend line support, potentially now act as resistance. So I want to pay attention to the Cad Yen, how we trade when we test up into this 7960 area. And let's just check in with some of these risk market so got the s p whilst we hold uh 34 30 as resistance i'm still looking for uh 31 37 on the downside now feasibly and this you know this corrected move could be over here we've technically completed an abc pattern for uh the elliott waivers amongst us and um and from here we you know we could easily make new highs um what i've been watching would be this trend line now. So if we can get up through there uh, into that um, 120, uh, sorry, the 3720 area. And if I can just move this around, I'll show you uh, why this has additional significance because what we've got there is the, um, the 127 fib extension. So this is a great topping pattern um, in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the S&P. So if we can, if we can, if we do take out this swing high, and, uh, and we get up through the prior highs, this is going to be a real area of interest. Certainly, as we head into these elections, at the moment, the, the in terms of risk sentiment, uh, we're really just being driven by stimulus. You know, will will they won't they announce a new stimulus bill? <laughs> more likely than not, they uh, sorry, more not likely than not, they will announce a stimulus bill, and that will give the markets a, uh, a sugar high. And, um, you know, is it going to be enough to, to take uh, 300 points higher? I don't know. But certainly this is an area of interest to me and I've been uh, long watching for and seeing if we do get into that area. Because what, again, in terms of divergence, it, uh, it appears unlikely to me that we will make a new high in terms of momentum. So we have some nice divergence on our hands by the time we, uh, we get up there. Now, it could be that we double top, which is another scenario. And again, double top with divergence, high probability trading setup. So paying attention to, to these two key levels in terms of the, the S&P. NASDAQ already on its, uh, already trying to make its move here. The, the NASDAQ into, its trend, uh, into the top of its trend channel would actually be a 200% extension, uh, sorry, 100% extension of the decline to the upside. Again, these levels have a tendency to, to see reactions in terms of price. So uh, 1280, uh, 1289.50 would be the uh, the area to watch in terms of the Nasdaq. Uh, gold hasn't quite uh, tested the um, the support zone that I'm looking for. You can see now we've got a some resistance here developing. I think in, in around this uh, 1940. So if we can get into this 1940 area, get another leg of downside to basically complete this corrective pattern, then I become uh, more constructive on gold. And certainly um, as we head into the election and the, the unknown election outcome and the potential for um, that the election to be contested, we, we, could, we might be moving past the idea of an election night or even an election week. We could be thinking in terms of an election month in the US that would uh, create a huge amount of uncertainty. And as such, Gold will probably catch a bid there. So looking for ideally a move down to test this 1820 to 1810 area. And then, like I say, become more constructive on gold. Obviously this 1840 needs to uh, hold as resistance. Crude oil, um, whilst we have this swing high in place at 41.30, um, I'm looking for a corrective pattern, a quality objective at 33.93 before we uh, see more upside in crude. And last but not least, Copper here, copper coming back up to the underside of its channel, and we're seeing a bit of weakness here. Um, so I want to pay attention to that, and certainly that will have implications for the um, the commodity currencies. 
So whilst we hold the current swing high, then we can see copper get down to test uh, support back in to these, uh, this 283 handle is, uh, is the area of interest. So that's, uh, that gives you a brief overview of the opportunities I'm watching where I see opportunities developing and, uh, and how I'm looking to play the markets uh, for the week ahead. So at this stage, I can open the floor uh, to any questions. If you've got a microphone, I can unmute your mic and you can ask me uh, live or you can just type in the chat box if there's a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered, happy to do that. Um, or like I say, raise your hand uh, via the Q&A and I can unmute your mic. Uh, Charlie, basic question, could you quickly go over pits and ticks? Um, this, this varies, Charlie, depending upon the instrument you're talking about. If, it's, if you're talking about the futures like the S&P 500 or the E-mini S&P 500, a tick is 0.25 of a one full point or one full dollar. Um, if you're talking about pips, um, a pip is the lowest percentage move possible. Uh, so, it, you know, it, here, let's say uh, 132.89, Point, uh, 132.89. So when we trade 132.90, we've moved one pip. But you can see here this um, internal number that they've got, uh, which is basically counting between 89 and 90. You could refer to that as a tick. So we generally, in terms of um, in terms of our, my trading anyway, I'm I'm always just thinking in terms of pips. I'm not uh, I'm not looking at, uh, at ticks, so to speak. Does that make sense, Charlie? Good stuff. Any other questions? If you don't have a question, if you could type an N in the chat box, that'd be useful um, so that I know uh, that, uh, that we're all on the same page. Uh, Cameron, I'm long-term EURUSD, but yeah, I'm, I'm bullish the Euro, uh, Cameron, myself. I'm just waiting for uh, uh, the entry level, like I said, that I'm looking at. I'm looking for us to test this 115 um, before getting in on the long side. Now, obviously, if we take out this trend line resistance here, uh, then I'd be looking at the potential for us to retest highs and, and break higher to test 121, 122. But in terms of um, longer term, I see us trading 130 plus, Cameron, is, uh, is my view. I think uh, we're just, you know, I've, I don't know if you saw these prior slides, but I mean, to my mind, we're moving into a, uh, a secular bear market in terms of the dollar index. Um, this chart gives you a, a rough idea of what, what it is I'm thinking in terms of uh, in terms of the dollar. So obviously the inverse then being true for um, for the euro. Does that make sense, Cameron? Good stuff. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I uh, hope you all have a good weekend and a uh, good week in terms of trading next week um, and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much for your time.